Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome to Gent Sense. Hope that you're having an awesome day. So a little while back, I did a video on uh, fragrances that are hyped, but that are not safe blind buys. Because there are a ton of fragrances out there that people who have smelled a billion different things think are just amazing scents for one reason or another, maybe because they're really cheap, but they smell very expensive or they're very unique, whatever. So they've gotten a lot of hype but for your average person, they're not gonna be a safe blind buy because a lot of those fragrances, people are gonna be kind of, ugh, you know, afraid to wear, frankly. And a bunch of you asked me through comments and emails if I would do a video on safe blind buys. So that's what we're trying to do today. Talk about some scents that are about as safe as you can get. We got niche, we got designer, these bad boys right here, they're going to offend like one one hundredth of 1% of the population just about the easiest stuff to wear on earth. So let's check these out. And guys, you know what time it is, uh, it's code time. What are those codes you may ask, as if you forgot, you know, from the last video you saw where I also mentioned them. For luckyscent.com, it's 10 gents, 10% 10 off your order. Twisted Lily and uh, Max Aroma, gents 10. 10% off your order. They've got a lot of niche fragrances at those websites. You should be able to find what you're looking for if you're looking for niche or indie on one of those. Use the code, save yourself some money. As I said, uh, with this one, the idea was trying to find just the safest stuff possible. Initially, I was thinking about getting some stuff that was uh, very much under the radar that I thought were safe blind buys. You know, maybe some fragrances designer wise or niche that not too many people know about as far as like your average person. But then I thought about it and I was like, ah, probably just keep it like safe, safe, safe blind buys. So that's what we're doing. But maybe in the not too distant future, I'll do the other thing and get some hidden gem type fragrances that are also safe blind buys. All right, so we're starting it off with Prada Loam. This right here is one of the quintessential go-to office fragrances for so many people out there. Very clean and soapy, a little bit powdery. This is like the go-to Prada Iris fragrance nowadays. And actually the whole Prada Loam line I thought was very solid. And yet uh, Prada doesn't seem overly enthused with the line. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Prada Loam Intense, that was amazing. Hard to find now. Same with a number of the other flankers in the line. Prada Loam though, the original, you can still find this. I think it is fantastic. Very elegant, very classy. And if you're looking for a very clean scent, that has a gentlemanly vibe, check this out. After that one, we're gonna go with Yves Saint Laurent's Y Eau de Toilette. And when I say Y Eau de Toilette, it goes for the original and also the new reformulation. Between the two, if I were gonna get just one, I would get the new one. I think it's a little bit better than the original. And this is another fragrance that is amazing in the office. You know, any kind of situation where you wanna be coming across a little bit classy, this is going to crush it. It still has that blue fragrance versatility, meaning that you can pull this off in pretty much any situation and it's gonna work, but it is particularly well suited for work situations. This one's very fresh and bright. It's not going to be powdery or soapy like Prada Loam is. It's a little bit sweeter, a little ozonic as well. Y Eau de Toilette, I think it's overlooked a lot of times. People will automatically go to Y Eau de Parfum. They'll automatically go to Dior Sauvage, something like that. But Y Eau de Toilette, I feel like is probably safer in more situations than Y Eau de Parfum or even Dior Sauvage. That being said, Dior Sauvage is also a really good choice. After that, we're gonna go to Chanel with Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Now you could also go with the Eau de Toilette or the Parfum version of Blue de Chanel. All of those are pretty safe, but the Eau de Parfum I feel like is more useful in more situations than the Eau de Toilette or the Parfum. So that's why it gets the nod here. As far as designer blue fragrances go, I think the Blue de Chanel line might be the most high quality smell. It has a really nice kind of refined edge to it. It's not too aggressive, not too in your face, not too sweet. Everything is balanced out really well. And then you've got that little bit of incense that kind of gives it an extra, an extra boost. So Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum, that one I think you gotta check out if you're looking for just, <laughs> frankly in any season any time of day any situation fragrance like a true year-round scent blue de chanel eau de parfum is just about as good as you're gonna find and it is super safe 
yeah, Voodoo Chanel, you're not gonna find very many people at all that smell that and think that, you know, oh, it's just not nice, something's wrong with it. Nah. And we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna go with a fragrance that is really tailor-made for summer. Definitely not something you'd wear in fall or winter and spring, probably not either. It's Dior Homme Cologne. There are other fragrances out there that smell similar to this. Jimmy Choo Man Ice, a bit similar to Dior Homme Cologne. And Chanel also has a Allure Homme Sport Cologne, which is similar to this. And then there's Mercedes Benz Cologne, which is similar to this. So there are a lot of fragrances out there that are Dior Homme Cologne ish. Now, this is enormously uplifting and brisk and refreshing. A lot of people will tell you it smells similar to like an iced lemonade on a hot day. I think it's just absolutely amazing. Man, this stuff smells so good. The only problem with this is the performance is not great. So it's gonna be one of those summer scents that's very refreshing and you smell it and you're like, oh man, awesome. Like I'm ready to go. And then uh, two hours later you go, hey, He's gone. But while it's around, this stuff is just such a people pleaser. Nobody will dislike this. Now I'm gonna do a twofer. So this is two fragrances, but it only counts as one slot in the list because they're both from the same house. Parfums de Marley Layton, Parfums de Marley Sedley, and they're both blue. Only this one is matte and this one's see-through. So Layton probably doesn't need too much of an introduction. This one, very spicy and sweet. It is perfect for fall and winter time. It is one of the most hyped, most beloved niche fragrances out there. And that's because the quality here is very high, but it's just like a designer fragrance in the sense that it's a big compliment puller made for maximum versatility. And it's also very, very, very safe. And there are other fragrances that smell similar to Layton as well. Uh, Detour Noir from Haramain is a clone of Layton, very cheap. And then Lalique White and Black, also quite similar to Layton. Then you got Sedley. This is going to be another very refreshing, aromatic, poppy blue fragrance. It's got uh, an ambroxany base, very modern type of scent. It's a great spring, summer, daytime fragrance office safe as well. And I would say for probably most people out there, Sedley is the go-to for spring and summertime from Parfums de Marly. I wanted to include two Parfums de Marly's because that house in particular with most of their releases does go for that designer usability, even though they're actually niche. Another two for up next, Creed Aventus. I mean, it's Aventus. Really nice opening. It's fruity and sweet. Pineapple, of course, is what most people gravitate toward with the opening here. And then as it dries down, it gets smokier and woodier. An amazing masculine scent. A lot of people would call it the king of men's fragrances. And like Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum, this one you can wear any time of the year, daytime or nighttime, but it is pricey. So if you wanted something a little bit cheaper than that, Explorer. This is from Mont Blanc at Discounters. Very inexpensive. It has an Aventus style to it. And they even kind of ripped off the color scheme and everything as well, but they just wanna make sure that you know that they know what they're doing. This one is gonna be obviously a little more synthetic smelling than Aventus. It's not as pineapple forward, not as smoky. But what that does do is it makes it better suited sometimes for higher heat situations than Creed's Aventus. And it does have just as much versatility as Aventus. And another two for, I promise, this is the last one. And these two, I don't know why I put them together, I just did. First up, Zerjov Neo, one of the best citrus openings that you will ever smell in any fragrance ever. So if you're looking for a scent that just has an opening of citrus and greens that will immediately capture attention, both yours and other people's, this you got to check out. It is a Zerzhov, so it is expensive, but you can find it at discounters. And then if you're looking for something that's going to give you that high end blue fragrance versatility, Elysium by Raja Parfum. This is the Parfum Cologne. There's also a Parfum, which is more expensive than this one, but it is uh, a bit richer, a bit deeper, a little more elegant. If I were gonna go with just one, I would go with Elysium Parfum, but this one is easier to find for a better price. And for most people, this is gonna do just as well as the Parfum. So Elysium Parfum Cologne, a very enlivening, sparkling opening here. You get juniper, you get citrus, a lot of notes to the fragrance actually. As it dries down, you maintain those aromatics, that citrus freshness into the mid and then you get a, a really nice, pleasant, woody base. So Elysium Parfum Cologne, 
also very safe. Now we're gonna go with another blue fragrance. This one, very affordable, super inexpensive from discounters, Loam Rocus. And this one to me has always smelled a little bit similar to Dolce & Gabbana's K Eau de Toilette, but I feel like this one is actually pulled off better. I think it smells nicer. And as I mentioned, it's way cheaper. So that's like a win, 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 because I'm not a big fan of K Eau de Toilette, but I do like this one. So even though I pick up that similarity, for whatever reason, this one just works better off my skin. You get citrus in here, blood orange, bunch of juniper as well. So you get this aromatic freshness, the dry down, really pleasant, very modern. It's a great daily wear fragrance for spring, summer, and early fall. And it just seems like everybody seems to love that stuff. They may not know the house, may not know the brand, but the smell people gravitate toward. Even me, who, like I said, doesn't really like K Eau de Toilette and I can smell that in there to an extent, but it just works so well, I don't care. After that, Ralph Lauren, Ralph's Club. This is the original. There's a new flanker to this as well. And that one also would work just as well in this list, but I had to pick one of them. So let's go with the original this time. This one caught a good amount of hate when it first came out because it wasn't what a lot of people were maybe expecting. They were thinking it was going to be more classically masculine, a little bit more old school, but then instead they got this, which is more of a blue fragrance style scent, a little bit similar to Y Eau de Parfum in the way that it's put together. So you're gonna get that sweetness, you're gonna get that bit of an aromatic feel, you're gonna get that amber woody sort of dry down, but the fragrance is great for pretty much anything anybody would ever want it to do. Versatility, yeah, through the roof. Compliment factor, absolutely. Performance, it's good. Classy looking bottle, yeah, does that too. It has an air of high quality to it. Like when you see the bottle, the presentation, everything, it looks nice, it looks well thought out. And then you smell it and you understand what they're going for. They're trying to move as many bottles of this as possible. And just by that, you know, the nature of the fragrance, I mean, that means it's a safe one for most people. Last, but definitely not least, Missoni Wave. Yeah, this little hype monster. Now I gotta say, looking at all these bottles here, we've got black, we've got blue, dark blue, we got gold, a lot of the same colors. And you look at this one. This is vibrant blue. It's an aquatic scent, in case you couldn't guess by the color and the name, Wave. It has a similarity to Versace Pour Homme and also Chanel Allure Homme Sport. It is cheap at discounters, doesn't cost that much, has a great looking bottle, has a nice magnetic cap, a lot to love here. Has good performance, good staying power. It is more versatile than you think. It's not really just a daytime only summer scent because as I said, it's similar to Allure Homme Sport and there are people that will wear that all year long. Actually, when I smell this, eh, it's kind of sacrilegious for me to say, but the quality actually comes across nicer than uh, the Versace. And that's not a shot at the Versace. I love Versace Pour Homme. I've worn that a bunch, but Missoni Wave is just one of those fantastic pickups for the price that it goes for. And it's very safe. So there we go. 10 safest blind buys, but I cheated. It's actually 13. Yeah, I guess I'll just name the video 13, whatever. As I said, I'll probably do another one of these in the future and include more kind of hidden gems that are also safe blind buys. But for now, I wanted to touch on fragrances that are known very well as being safe scents for most people and most occasions. I wanna thank you guys for hanging with me here until the end. Stay safe out there and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.